what up guys it's your boy nakamoto crypto here and today 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 we have got the story of harl finney the first guy who ever received a bitcoin transaction from mr satoshi himself was harl finney the real satoshi let's find out harold thomas finney ii was born on may 4th 1956 he was a developer for PGP Corporation and was the second developer hired after Phil Zimmerman. In his early career, he was credited as lead developer on several console games. He was also an early Bitcoin contributor and received the first Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi. Finney was born in California. His father was a petroleum engineer. He attended the California Institute of Technology, graduating with a BS in Engineering in 1979. After he graduated from Caltech, he went on to work in the computer gaming field for a computer company that developed video games such as Adventures of Tron, Armor Ambush, Astro Mash, and Space Attack. He later on went to work for the PGP Corporation where he remained working until his retirement in 2011. Finney was a noted cryptographic activist during the early 1990s. In addition to being a regular poster of the cypherpunks listserv, Finney ran two anonymous remailers and a remailer is pretty much a server that receives messages with embedded instructions on where to send them next and that forwards them without revealing where they originally came from they are cypherpunks anonymous remailers mixmaster anonymous remailers and satoshi was known to be really good at hiding the sources of his identity in terms of sending emails, information, and transactions. Further, cryptographic activism included running a successful contest to break the export grade encryption Netscape used. In 2004, Finney created the first reusable proof of work system before Bitcoin. In January 2009, Finney was the first network transaction recipient. So Finney as a cypherpunk, long time before the creation of Bitcoin, was coded to have said, it seems so obvious to me. Here we are faced with the problems of loss of privacy, creeping computerization, massive database, more centralization, and David Chaum offers a completely different direction to go in. One which puts power in the hands of individuals rather than governments and corporations. The computer can be used as a tool to liberate and protect people rather than control them. He was an early Bitcoin user and received the first transaction from Satoshi. Finney lived in the same town for 10 years right next to where Dorian Nakamoto was discovered adding to the speculations that he may have been Bitcoin's creator himself. Finney denied this later on by saying quote unquote, when Satoshi announced the first release of the software, I grabbed it right away. I think I was the first person besides Satoshi to run Bitcoin. I mined block 70 something and I was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction. When Satoshi sent 10 coins to me, as a test, I carried on an email conversation with Satoshi over the next few days, mostly me reporting bugs and fixing them. Today, Satoshi's true identity has become a mystery, but at the time, I thought I was dealing with a young man of Japanese ancestry who was very smart and sincere. I have had the good fortune to know many brilliant people over the course of my life so I recognized the signs. After a few days, Bitcoin was running pretty stable. So I left it running. Those were the days 
when difficulty was at 1 and you could find blocks with a CPU not even a GPU. I mined several blocks over the next few days but I had to turn it off because it made my computer run so hot and the fan noise bothered me. In retrospect I wish I had kept it longer but on the other hand I was extraordinarily lucky to be there at the beginning of Bitcoin. It's one of those glass half full half empty things. The next I heard of Bitcoin was in late 2010 when I was surprised to find out that it was not only still going but Bitcoin actually had monetary value. I dusted off my old wallet and was relieved to discover that my bitcoins were still there. As the price climbed up to real money, I transferred the coins into an offline wallet where hopefully they will both be worth something to my heirs. So right after bitcoin was created, Finney announced in an essay that he has been diagnosed with ALS and tragically he passed away a few years after that which was in 2014 when he was completely paralyzed he requested that his body would be cryogenically preserved in a freezer as he believed in the future someone would cure ALS and they may be able to bring him back to life. So back in 2009 when Finney received his first few coins he made a calculation that estimated that each bitcoin will be one day worth 10 million dollars per coin. That was the life story of Harold Finney. It has been one of the biggest mysteries raging across the internet. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Newsweek published an article claiming the man in these images is the Bitcoin founder. The man who created Bitcoin is known as the father of Bitcoin, the online currency now worth billions. When you asked him about Bitcoin and he says, I can't talk about this anymore, he was not referring to Bitcoin. But with me, he definitely acknowledged Bitcoin. I think at this point now he's saying he was confused by the conversation. Clearly somebody thought that we did this as an act of war against Satoshi Nakamoto or Bitcoin. And I want to be very clear that um, I certainly never meant it that way. I have nothing to do with Bitcoin. It was a monster story. How did they figure it out? Oh my God, look at this guy that they named. He's, his name is Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, living in California, basically hiding in plain sight. It becomes a gigantic media scramble. And then Dorian emerges from his house looking kind of disheveled, looking kind of confused, and says he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, says he's never heard of Bitcoin. He doesn't understand. He had one conversation with Leah. She misunderstood what he said. She took it the wrong way. And you probably would have had to have been a cypherpunk to understand all the elements of it that had already been put together. The odds of it seem very low to me that it was somebody from completely outside that community who happened to know all these different things and put this together and appear out of nowhere. The day that Newsweek's story came out, naming Dorian Nakamoto as the creator of Bitcoin, I got this email from an old acquaintance that was titled, What are the odds? And it's laid out the fact that Hal Finney lives less than two miles away from the known address of Dorian Nakamoto, where Newsweek had found him. And Hal Finney is the number two ever user of Bitcoin, who received the first Bitcoin transaction. He works on an early prototype of an anonymous currency system. He was a cypherpunk. So how could it be that the purported creator of Bitcoin and this known, confirmed, second ever user of Bitcoin hadn't ever collaborated, that Hal Finney, who was less than two miles away from Dorian Nakamoto, hadn't helped to create Bitcoin, or maybe he really was the creator of Bitcoin. Maybe Hal Finney was Satoshi Nakamoto. When you look at the Bitcoin white paper, it made reference to a lot of the earlier projects that fed into Bitcoin, but it's very notable that the one project it doesn't refer to is Nick Szabo's Bitcold, which is perhaps the closest precedent and the closest parallel to Bitcoin. 
Bickle. I mean, Bickle is so close to Bitcoin, it's hard not to think that, you know, maybe Nick is Satoshi. A lot of people will say Nakamoto must be Zabo. Nakamoto must have been Finney. But I don't think he was trying to leave any breadcrumbs out there for anybody to follow. I told my editor about it. <laughs> he agreed that you found Satoshi Nakamoto. So I got on a plane to Santa Barbara and I drove out to Hal Finney's house. Um, but at this stage, he was already completely paralyzed by ALS. This really awful debilitating terminal illness that slowly shuts down your body while leaving your mind completely intact. And the time when he started to fade in his physical abilities did roughly coincide with the time that Satoshi Nakamoto started to disappear. Now, maybe the reason that Satoshi Nakamoto had chosen to fade away was because Hal Finney was physically fading. There have been a number of stylometric studies, and you see so many of these similarities between Satoshi's writing and those of Nick's, including these little things like having two spaces at the beginning of a sentence and phrases and spellings that nobody else uses. So I talked to Hal as much as I could, mostly in a kind of one-way interview, because he could really only respond with yes or no answers. And he denied being Satoshi Nakamoto. You could tell that he was amused by the whole idea that I thought he was Satoshi Nakamoto. One of the really remarkable things from Nick Zabo's writing in those months before Bitcoin was publicly launched is that Nick, in responding to some comments about a post he had made about Bitgold, actually asked the other people who were reading him if anybody wanted to help him code this idea up into real software that could work. It was never turned into a reality, but when you look at Bitgold, it's, it's hard not to be struck by uh, the similarities between it and, and Bitcoin. Maybe it was a duo. It was Zabo and Hal Finney, and now... It's Hal's possible. Based. Yeah, Hal could have been the coder. Um, I don't know. You know, this idea that, that Hal Finney could have been the kind of ghost coder for Bitcoin, uh, I guess it's possible. Other people kind of speculating on Reddit or other parts of the internet thought that maybe Hal Finney had used Dorian Nakamoto as a, a patsy. If he were ever traced back to Dorian Nakamoto, it would seem like this guy was the creator and Hal Finney would be sort of immunized from it. Everyone else who was involved in the projects leading up to Bitcoin has released their communications with Satoshi from this period. Nick has avoided doing that and essentially went silent in those critical months after Bitcoin was released. You know, when you talk to people face to face and they tell you these things, you can get a sense of their being honest. And if Hal Finney actually had a secret billion dollar cash of Bitcoins, he wouldn't have been able to lie to me so effectively about it. In the end, the reasons to believe that this was all just a coincidence began to outweigh the coincidence itself. It's almost like an eel. There is something there, you can see it, but as soon as you touch it, it just slides right out of your hands and you're left with nothing. Anybody who is of any note in the cypherpunk movement, and even outside of it too, has at one time or another been called Satoshi. Hal Finney denied it, Nick Zabo denied it, they've all denied it. Maybe one of them is Satoshi, maybe all of them are Satoshi. It really is a mystery.